Welcome to the third episode of Grubby's Warcraft 3 Commentaries. This series is made possible by Steel Series. I'm Grubby. I'm a professional gamer in Warcraft 3 for about a third of my lifetime, and I'm showing you some of the best games I've had in my career. In episode 1 and 2, I took you back to the BlizzCon of 2005, where I faced and defeated SK Zarkard in the Grand Finals for $10,000. Now, I'll be taking you a year ahead to the World Esports Festival 2006 in China, the city of Qingdao. The semi-finals of this tournament had me facing World Elite's W.E. Suho, a Chinese Night Elf player. So let's see, the first map is starting on Twisted Meadows. And now, I was going into this game not really knowing how uh, Suo would do his creep route. In Warcraft 3, unlike some of the other RTS where most elements are getting an economy and creating an army which counters your opponent's army, a huge thing about Warcraft 3 is the creeping aspect. People could be thinking about this for days. How am I gonna creep? Which creep camp am I taking first? Which one am I taking second? If he takes this camp, where am I gonna uh, go next? Where am I gonna try to mess with him? There's so many permutations, combinations and possibilities in the, in the creep routes that it really becomes a whole new aspect and game on it itself. So some of the ways for Night Elf to open on this map are creep this little green camp over here. Or you can place an Ancient of War next to this camp. It will give you level 1.9 hero and you finish almost before your enemy could possibly arrive. Quite a nice advantage. Or you can creep this camp with an Ancient of War. Extremely risky, which you should only attempt with several wisps for repair and while eating a tree with your Ancient of War. You don't want to do that if there's any chance of your opponent finding it and punishing you for it. If you start here on the top left location, you might want to place down an Ancient of War right here. One Archer, an Ancient of War, one two Wisps, and your tree getting regeneration from eating one of these trees will be enough to creep it with virtually no damage. Make sure you send a Wisp over to the Mercenary Camp to hire a Shadow Troll Priest who can aid in damage and healing. Even though all the creeps will be fooled to attack your Ancient of War when it's uprooted, that's the way artificial intelligence of this game works in regards to the Ancient of War, this little guy, well this big guy I should say, he will keep throwing boulders onto your archer. But don't worry, it will only happen three times and your archer will survive with about one hit point. So that's okay. But uh, this gets your hero to about level 2.3, a really nice advantage. You also get access to the mercenary camp um, and you get quite a bit of money and a very nice big item and a secondary small item from the rock golem. The risk of creeping this right away, even if you are over here, top left, and the orc is bottom right, is that if your opponent creep jacks, he could possibly steal the rock on level 6, or kill several of your units, including wisps, archer, and uh, troll shadow priest. So I had no idea how he's going to start, or where he is, so I decided to send out a scout peon over here on the left side. As soon as I saw he's not here, I know that he won't be creeping this camp with Ancient of War. What I then need to do is send my hero out onto the map and check this area here and this area here. So on Twisted Meadows, the only small creep camp are these two little guys. That means if I want to start creeping with just one blade master and one grunt, and I don't want to be too risky or take too much damage, this is the only one I can do safely. So what you often see orcs do is to creep out these guys in all corners of the map and three of those camps give level 2. It's not a terribly effective way of creeping, but it's the safest way for Orc to do so when you start out with a Blade Master. If you creep this right away, if you do it right, both your Grunt and your Blade Master will be at about 40% of their life. That's pretty risky if your opponent decides to come with his Demon Hunter right away to mana burn you. So I've chosen to go for an aggressive approach this game, whereby I try to mess with my opponent's creep route rather than creep for myself. It's just too efficient for him to creep this without me punishing it. However, this creeper route, it was kind of being popularized by Suho, in fact, on this particular map. So 
while some of the players who may have been playing Warcraft 3 for quite some time already know this creep route in and out, at the time of him doing this, it was completely unknown to me. So you can see actually my regular, uh, my regular scouting pattern has me scouting with my blade master over here and here later maybe and my grunt going the other way. That's not actually a fast enough method to do anything about his creep route. So uh, of course later you learn you learn but uh, we were pioneering. Pioneering strategies and metagaming so I see he's not there so I did have an inkling that he might be creeping that but this is not actually the fastest way of finding him. If I had sent my scout peon to this position I would be able to exclude two starting positions and I would know he's probably doing something here at the third or here at the goblin shop. So as you see when I arrive he already finished. There's not much for me to do. Attacking the Ancient of War is suicide. <laughs> you saw me thinking about it there for a second. Uh, so I'm probably gonna get a whack from the Ancient of War with my grunt. Don't get near me! And uh, that's one moody son of a gun. And uh, now I'm going for his Archer or Wisp? Probably I'll be going for his Archer. Ah, I see a Wisp here, that's always good. We're under attack. Get one free Wisp kill there. You just gotta take what you can. Um, sometimes as an Orc you may feel a little helpless that, uh, like, I mean, oh, I can't even stop him from the creep route, he's already done when I arrive. True, but it's not e entirely without its uh, sacrifices and costs. After all, when he does this, for a moment he'll have only three wisps in his gold mine because he has to make an altar and he has to send a, a wisp to make an ancient of war so that's something he has less money that means slower tech lower unit count moreover all the archers that are coming out of this ancient of war will be fragile because you could be catching them on the way back home i decide not to because i feel um, he just got an advantage and he might want to just play it safe because he saw me being aggressive from that reasoning I realize he's probably going to be staying at home for a while as you can see I don't have vision of that but I was right uh, and I decided to creep my own camp now I already have two grants just now I had only one grant so the creep camp becomes way more comfortable to creep I can actually creep it just taking about half damage on my blade and a little bit of damage on a uh, second grant so it's better that I just you know, bought some time, made each of us waste some time until such time as that I have enough units to comfortably creep this camp. So now actually we're both level 2 at about the same timing, though he was ahead before. So that's pretty decent, I mean, uh, this is about 5 years ago, maybe now I do it differently, but I'm not at all too unhappy about what's going on now. Now uh, these grunts, you can see they were thinking about creeping this. Uh, that's an okay thing to do, it will give me, uh, instead of level 2, give me about level 2.4, 2 2.3-ish. That's something, but it's not something that catapults me with an advantage into the game. So, chose not to do it, although I have been thinking about it. Now I feel like I'm probably missing out on something. I didn't see him attacking me, didn't see him harassing me. And when that's the case, you know your opponent is doing something sneaky. And probably he doesn't want to be found out, so I should be finding out what he's doing right now. Suddenly I had the idea he might be creeping this camp over here. Now that I think of it, I do think I have seen him doing that once before. Um, and I suddenly remembered it during the game that happens. So actually, I am arriving just in time. But am I nimble enough to get the hit after... Uh, well, to get the very last hit on the rock column, because I see this ancient war is about to hit, 50 damage, then there'll be only 20 life left, so you have to be very precise, and I'm not sure if I'll have it. Yeah, I did not get the kill, and he did. Yeah, he did. So there was, there was an extremely well-timed uh, decision by him. He had his ancient of war hit, and the demon hunter just a millisecond afterwards. So there was almost no window of opportunity for me to come in between there. Now I try to steal an item, but no, he got them all because right after he killed it, he moved right on top of the items. Very well done by him, and you can see that he practiced this uh, creep route, perhaps even against the computer. Pretty nice thing for Night Elf to do. So I only have 60, 70 mana, not even enough for a windwalk, so I have to sufferingly watch while he finishes up this creep camp, and I know that he's nearly level 3 or level 3 already. He gets the last creep himself, and all I can do is try to get some kills of units. Now, he knows I have dust and boots, so he decides to TP out. Smart decision. If he hadn't, he would have probably lost more than just the one sh troll shadow priest. 
We're under attack! Now I decided to creep because he just TP'd home. I don't know how long he's going to stay at home and I decided I need to get some experience points back in to get back into the game. Uh, he got Naga Sewage. Never seen him do that. I'm level 2.7. Uh, quite risky because I'm going across the middle of the map now where there's a tavern from which Night Elf loves to hire second hero. So for all I know, he could be right there now with a Naga Sea Wish, and I would be forced to Town Portal. So it's a little bit risky, but I thought, you know, I, I have a Town Portal, I can use it if I need to. But uh, basically, every time you decide to creep, there is a sacrifice. It's something I call opportunity loss. You're losing the opportunity to creep check your opponent, and that shows itself really painfully as he gets another one of these big camps. So. He now has greater invulnerability and he has Scroll of the Beast, a big damage boost for his entire army. And he's here without Town Portal and pretty close to my base, with a, a second hero who is really good uh, at level 1 already, and not necessarily that much better per level. Of course, she's better per level, but you have other heroes who rely much more on hero leveling, for example the Torrent Chieftain or the Pandaren Brewmaster. They get exponentially better as they grow in level. The Naga Sewage is what I call like a, an early aggressive hero who, with whom you probably need to do some damage within about one minute of hiring her to justify getting her. Like, if you did just decide to go creep the whole game, you're better off picking something like Pandaren Brewmaster because his, uh, his skills stack their area of effect and Naga Sewage is more of a pick off one unit at a time thing and you want to start early with that. Don't want to wait too long to start picking off him. He decides to head to my base, We're and I attack. am woefully creeping more and more, so it gets really risky. Now I see him come in, I'm right here with my blade, gets level 3, and I'm still heading to his base. What does that mean? I d it means I want to check out where he's at. Is he going for Ancient of Wind or Ancient of Lore? It's very easy to get caught up in defending your base and then forgetting about scouting your opponent. I mean, uh, it's very important to know whether he's going for Druids of the Talent strategy or, or, or Bears or Dryads or a mixture of all. So, still decide to go there. I'm already here. I see nothing, but he is going for Tier 3, so that says something. It means it's not Tier 2 Mass Dryad. But this gets really risky. He's got Scroll of the Beast, taking down this burrow really easily. He cannot out repair it. And uh, there's my Torrent Chieftain. He can do a level 2 mana burn on that. So, I quickly get a Shockwave off. That's it, no more mana on this guy. And I need to run now, because uh, no life on my grunts. Don't want to give away free grunts. My blade, he's more safe. He has town portal, he's stronger by himself, but the frost arrow really reduces his damage, so I need to go away. And at this point, I need some time. He killed my burrow, which is huge. Sometimes I point down a loss on a map simply by losing one burrow. It's really that important, because now I have to research and snare first. I don't get my raider yet. Uh, I don't get my spurt walker yet. I need to spend that money on a burrow, so I really don't want to be doing that. So that's pretty good by him. Cost him a scroll of the beast, but he gets a burrow kill. Still, he didn't kill any extra units, so I'm not quite out of it. I'm set back, but I know he already lost his town portal or something, and uh, he just used one of his big items. It could be a lot worse. I could have lost a hero or unit, so. Now I just need to kind of consolidate uh, my army, consolidate myself, and uh, get my Torrent Chieftain level up. Don't lose it to Kreese. <laughs> Never a good thing to do. And I still uh, Tone of Agility plus 2 there. Pretty important since our first hero is an uh, agility based hero. So it gives me plus 2 damage. He doesn't have it, so that's a plus 4 damage advantage to my side if you follow me. Torrent Chieftain level 2, really risky creep route, need to return home to get some more heal solves. And I'm finally getting my first tech unit. Just checking up what he's doing, Ancient of, uh, Ancient of Wind, so I know he's going for Druids of the Talent. That means I'm doing the right thing in my army composition right now. Keeping that uh, map vision with my blade, I see he's heading towards the middle. Uh, some Night Elves, they like to go 2 hero get their master upgrade for talents and then go creep some and then finally get their third at 45 foot. 
so catapulting them into a perfect 50 foot army. Um, others, they like to get really quick third hero, um, and they're ad omitting the, the exact tech advantage, they're omitting having a lot of mana on their uh, Druids of the Talon, but they just want to go for like a quick uh, attack whereby the orcs' heroes are not that high yet. So they have level 1 heroes, second and third, but all of them they have like a skill which is immediately useful, which adds something to the fight. And then combine that with fairy fire and uh, some smart focusing, perhaps heal potion usage, perhaps uh, staff of preservation, and they can like trade blows with the orc. And even if Night Elf doesn't kill any units from the orc, it can still be worth it. Why? Because after the fight, they'll make use of their Moonwell and then attack again, and this time for real. And meantime, Orc has to use money on heal solves. Heals up, he's spending money on that, and then he doesn't get any extra units. In the meantime, Elf has been making units and makes use of their ratio advantage of Moonwells to heal up and come again. So that's, an, that's something nice to think about. Even if you didn't kill any units from the Orc, and even if you lost something, it could still have been a success in the economical standpoint. So let's see, he's hired a Fire Lord, another one of those heroes who is really good at level one already, and not necessarily that much better on level two and three. So this is a, a quick rush strategy from him. And I'm only level two and level three. A bit low life on my blade and I don't carry more than just one heal solve with me. So I would love to get some more time right now. I need more time. I'm just only forty food. He's at fifty. He just hired some mercenary. He already has four, five mercenaries. So again, units which are good to bolster your army quickly. I decide I cannot take this fight. What do you do when uh, when you can't take a fight? Some people would have you believe you should honorably sacrifice yourself, make a last stand, lose the game directly. Um, they've even told so uh, to me sometimes. Not exactly in those words, but that's the meaning that comes through. I am not of that school of thought. Uh, I, I decide to try to win games, and the best thing to do for me right now is to try to kill reinforcements, possibly uh, kill some food structures or Ancient of Wind, and try to make sure he can't produce as many extra units, so that when I do finally come home with these three extra units, I'm able to somehow uh, level out uh, the playing field, try to uh, you know hurt his reinforcement capability. So. He's going straight for my burrow. Smart thing to do, because he sees I'm not intending to go home yet. Uh, you know, he could be attacking like a slow push, stay in good position, attack my barracks, do a slow siege. But when I'm going for something which hurts him, he needs to go for something that hurts me. If I could be coming from the back or town portal on top of him, he wouldn't be wanting to do this. He would want to stay here, nice defensive position. But he sees he needs to force me to come home to defend sooner rather than later. So he goes straight for what hurts the most, and for Orc, that's Burroughs. Immediately takes that down, I decide to try to uh, get some shots in, do some repairs, but I basically cannot out-repair this damage. And I guess it would be ridiculous if I could, because uh, Burroughs are meant to be the racial weakness uh, of the Orc. So uh, I do kill his entangled gold mine there, I went straight for that, and that means uh, he detonated everything so I have no more mana which makes it even harder for me to come back and fight but it does mean he's not mining any money right now great thing for me so now I should be TPing home soon I just got my raider out uh, let's see the grunt is just out I should be TPing home right now and do I do that? I do okay, so he decides to pull out because he needs to get in position but you see what my grunt is doing there I put him on hold position I'm basically isolating his demon hunter and this archer out of the fight. Pretty nice thing. Blocking him a bit with my TC, but now the fighting starts in earnest. And I don't have any spirit link right now. Uh, yeah, okay, I do have a little bit of spirit link, but not much. And my own grunt raider and walker, plus these peons, are not really part of the fight either, so. One way uh, you can see whether the fight is going well for the elf or the orc in any fight is to see after about 10 seconds of combat, is there any damage on the Night Elf heroes? If not, even if you're killing Druids of the Talents, it's going quite well for him. Because as Orc is losing units in the fight, two heroes is not enough to beat three heroes from the Night Elf if they're still all in full life. They have Orb of Venom, they have one hero more than you have, and even if you outlevel him, the third extra hero helps a lot because heroes are a big damage dealer. So 
you can tell now, in about 10-15 seconds, if he still has high hit points on his heroes, it's going to be extremely difficult for me. And also you can see already I have 3 units on deep red, so not a very auspicious start for me. But I do finally get the hit, I'm adding on these peons and army into the fight, uh, getting like a last minute heal potion, I have invulnerability, I get a shockwave there, all good things for me. Uh, heard some talent dying, that's good. He's still on pretty high life, that's not a good thing for me. All my units are dying, horrible. Don't have any heal scroll, very low units, very low units, Spirit Link is really helping out here and him focusing my heroes and he did lose all his units So you can see now it's about 30 seconds into the fight and his heroes are low life and uh, my army is now outnumbering him, I'm now 43 to 21 food. Deceptive however, because in a few strokes, a few heal potions he could be killing a lot of my units but you can see how my micro and uh, the spirit link is really saving my ass here. Uh, one grunt goes down there, another grunt will go down, he's doing spirit, he's doing fork lighting, he loses his fire lord, I'm gonna lose my blade master, yep. Uh, he, he does have a chance now to run away his demon under his naga, does not die, heal potion, nice shot from him there. Now I'm losing a lot of units, so just now you could say, okay, 43 food against 21, game over, you know, Grubby's winning, wrong. Uh, I'm at 26 food out of 30 now, and he's at 16. Sure, that's bad. Uh, killing that gold mine was huge. I'm very happy about myself that I did that. Uh, but uh, he's got high level heroes, and I am completely lacking in damage output now. TC, who is being slowed by Fork Light, uh, by Frost Arrow, not much. You know, a lot of red units. So. Level 4 Demon Hunter. He just sold his Orb of Venom to buy preservation just to save his naga. An unfortunate decision because he was too slow. Our champion has fallen. <laughs> Your building is complete. Pouring myself some water. Even orcs need to drink water. Yeah, so we're both in a very uh precarious position, he kills another walker, he's at 12 foot, only just started mining again with just 2 wisps, so it looks really bad for him, but uh, he's out leveled me and he has his main hero alive, both uh, nice things. Fast forward a little bit, he is deciding to come harass again, get some mana burns in, he's putting a wisp there. See, he's not making anything here, not making anything here. Just Our needs to get his mining back up, and he's not actually making any heroes. So this is what he has, one demon hunter. And you would say the game is over, but check the game time. Getting some really safe creeps in at this time. I'm not exactly sure uh, where he's at. He was quite slow to get his money back in, he's now at 6400 gold left in his mine and I'm at 5300, so he lost about a thousand gold uh, there. I don't know where he's at so I need to creep safe and he actually decides to masquerade as Demon Hunter as a Blade Master. Blade Master of course being the one who's invisible, he bought a hundred gold potion to do the same with his demon, because this is a safe way for him to find out what I'm doing and knowing what your opponent doing is half the battle. Really, it is. Fire Lord here. So I stay at home, quite safe. He's decided to pull his shop a bit back, I think, get in better position. Maybe put it here or here or here or even up here. The shop, of course, is an instrumental uh, building to fend off any direct attacks to the base. It gets you instant heal potions. He might want to get back his Orb of Venom, so it's pretty nice for him to want to save that. Just a little thing, put it in a safer position. He sees me over here, he, inv invisibility potion takes 2 minutes, so he's not nearly running out yet, but you do need to keep that in mind, because suddenly popping out there saying hi is not something you want to do. Ready to ride. My blade master is back already, I'm trying to find out some information about him, and I'm back to 37 food, so it's starting to creep here, and what he wants to do is probably stand right there and try to get the last... No, not the last hit, he'll probably kill himself. He just wants to steal the item at this point. I mean, it could be a Tome of Experience and a Scourge Bone Chimes. Huge game decisive items. So if he gets that, uh, he keeps the fate in his own hand. And even if I have item luck here, something which some people love to, to hate, like love to complain about after a game, if you're there stealing his item, that item luck is yours. So 
I like to think of luck as you make your own luck as well. You could be stealing all your opponent's stuff. So let's see who gets this. It is in fact a Tome of Knowledge and I don't know what the other thing is. Let's see who gets it. And it was too slow. <laughs> I immediately picked it up. You know, that's something else you can do. Even if you don't know if your opponent is invisible, it's an option. And these are the kind of things that I'm thinking about. What if my opponent is invisible right now next to me? It could be a, a 2% chance and I'll still be spamming the click there on the item because uh, I don't want him to steal it. And maybe he was a little bit inattentive. I mean, he has to be careful. He can't afford to Steve click the golem and reveal himself because he'll just die and then it will really be game for him. So 40 food. And he's at 32, so... He's getting back in there, back into the game, and decides to get a Chimera Roost. And the Tree of Life over here. So, if you imagine that, he could have been at 40 food now. So, the money I spent in healing myself and in making myself safe, and I the money he spent into this, enemy. if he hadn't spent it, we would have been about equal food. So, pretty amazing, considering he was down 1000 gold. It shows how difficult it was for me to fend off that uh, attack earlier on, and how much I spent doing that. Leaving the Blade Master is never something that uh, an orc can easily forget. Quite costly. There we go. Tell of Agility. Pick it up with the wrong hero. Uh, another strength. So my TC is getting to be quite beastly. He gets Scourge Bone Chimes. And what else? A Tome of... I would say he got the Tome of Intelligence. No, I think a Tome of Strength. It's good to pick up extra life for his uh, demon. We're under attack. Now it's a creeping game. I find myself to be f on the far side of the map, and that means I need to have a town portal. Otherwise, he could be flying in, killing my bros, and I would have to run back. Bad. We're under attack. Bad is not good. So Ready peel on over here to scout him coming. He clears that up. Really nice for him. Now he could be slipping in already, and I wouldn't know. And he actually does. <laughs> there you go. So, if I had seen him coming here, I would have been able to speed scroll home and save myself the expense of a town portal. Him sending out those uh, lava spawns to clear up the peon really helps him. It, uh, that's a 350 gold gain for him. Or, well, a 300 gold gain, because speed scroll would also cost 50. But there he is. Gonna almost kill my spirit walker. And I find his tree of life. Nice thing to do Our for me to uh, to kill before I town portal. And there we go. Now I have to town portal. He'll probably get one bro kill and then he'll TP out himself. Do I do a shockwave? Yep. Get one talent kill. That's worth it. Because I'm gonna regenerate mana now anyway. I was at my max. So I'm being kept at 50 food. And he's at 47 now. And he has one Chimera getting second Chimera and, he, and a third, so two Chimera roofs. What can I say about my play now? I was creeping heavily, that's good, and I needed my Blade Master for it, so that's a decision. Another decision would be to creep slower with just my TC and to scout his base now and then. But uh, to be honest, I didn't expect to see something special. I thought I'll be seeing more talents, uh, you know, everything I would expect. Had I scouted, would I have seen the chimeras? I should have probably made more burrow and second beastery. But uh, did not happen. I do almost go into his base now. No. So it is still a surprise for me. And I see no expansion here. So I feel safe now. And now I go in and I see two chimera roofs. Whoa. Very unexpected. Immediately make that second burrow and beastery. I'm telling you, I, I have not watched this pre-game, uh, this replay before doing this commentary, but one, my memory of tournament games is scary sometimes, <laughs> and the second thing is that I still think the same sometimes, so I'm not too surprised that I do exactly what I thought I would do. One thing is I'm really low on lumber, so by the time all this finishes, I don't actually have enough lumber for more than two bed riders or something. I just made the expansion. Perhaps I shouldn't have. Perhaps I should uh, get bed riders, but I already decided to do it and sometimes an expansion can help you in, in ways you could not imagine. So 
decided to keep it. And I felt as long as I see him here in the base, I'm safe. Because surely he will move out with everything, right? Wrong. Kimura's here and he's actually upgrading. Uh, did he already upgrade? I don't know. Okay, so as you see, he upgraded the corrosive breath. Corrosive breath, great thing to upgrade when you're attacking fortified buildings. Attacking medium armor, oh no, sorry, heavy armor burrows, it's not good. Their normal attack is magic damage. Huge magic damage. It kills grunts very quickly, specifically, and spirit walkers. Uh, and it kills burrows very quickly. Only thing is, it has a shorter range, so my burrows can counter attack. But that's really no concern, because he kills them lightning quick. In fact, I think upgrading corrosive breath here really. Uh, hurts him because you see it's really not that impressive damage. He would have already torched all my burrows if he had uh, the lightning attack, but a uh, bit of a wrong upgrade. Not sure uh, why he did it. Not sure I really uh, care too much. I mean, uh, anything you can get, you should be happy about it. We're not, uh, we're not playing cards here after all. We're fighting war. Okay, so one bad ride is not enough to kill him, no need to use it. want to do only productive things, and uh, it does help him to have that attack that he has higher range now. So Our warriors have engaged makes me want to go zvoomoo! Pretty happy. Still only lost one burrow. Getting that upgrade, getting that uh, expansion there, so... Now it becomes a scary situation, because I feel I don't have that much map control anymore. I did ensnare one uh, Chimera there. That's a kill for me. And he decided to attack my expansion, but did not work out. He has another secret expansion, and I feel like he probably felt he was quite far behind, and maybe he was right, and that's why he's doing the, the Chimera thing. Our gold mine is running low. Gold mine running low. Mine must be even more empty because uh, he did lose that money before. And you see some very nice scouting by me. Uh, basically, when you feel ahead, the stupidest thing to do is to think that you're winning. Uh, you should go scout everywhere to see if he has any expansions or unit producing structures you didn't know about. If I just attacked him in his base, it could have been quite risky. Let's say his chimeras were home and he has defensive position, moon wells. I could be throwing away the game. Add to that possibly that, for example, he would have like a lava spawn here or an Ancient of War at the same time as I'm attacking there and I could lose the whole momentum. So, scouting for ex expansions, uh, the right thing to do. Going right here to go kill it. And meantime, I'm saving up some bad riders. Shockwave the Wisps. Now he's here. See, they kill peons quite fast. Now I have no more income, and he's here killing bad riders. Will he kill bad riders? Uh, no. Killing burrows. Now it's become a full fledged elimination war. These are my last five peons, which I'm deciding to use to uh, mine here. I'm coming here, nearly killed this fire lord and Naga, but not quite, so. I'm feeling the squeeze a little bit. His chimeras are here, and I just. Uh, double blasted his chimera, but he actually has one armor upgrade. Oh you sly fox, when did you do that? Yep, he actually got a hunter's hold just to get armor upgrade, so I thought two bad rider attacks would kill the chimera. Not true. That's really making it inefficient for me, because three bats cost more than one chimera. Uh, this one has a bit of damage from splash, so I know two bats will kill this one. Uh, but there's no real rush for me to go and explode and kill him. If I just keep taps on him, as I'm doing now, move commanding on him, uh, if he flies out over the open, I'll be able to ensnare him. And he has no anti-air, so whereas maybe a little bit less experienced player could be deciding to go, okay, I can kill him, I'm gonna go kill him right now. I decided to just move command on him, because they're no threat as long as he's not attacking me. So just keep it like that. That's a stalemate, and it's ad advantageous for me. 
mining. He's deciding to make another expansion, and he could be walking his uh, main tree as well, making one more chimera. And he has one as here as well. So now he's flying here. This creates an opportunity for me to ensnare him if I run there. And I do decide to go on an interception course. And so is he. He wants to go snipe my bats. So we're both being pretty smart here. Both have our own evil little plans. Flying here on the edge of the map. But uh, he actually saved his uh, chimeras back home. So just gonna fast forward a little bit. I'm in an increasingly better position because I'm mining and I'm making another expansion, Forward. getting some bat riders. So at this point, I have been playing it safe, admittedly, but there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, getting no TP, yeah, getting even getting a TP, so that's really safe, and uh, that's how you want to do it when you're uh, playing an important match. So I found him here. I will converge with my whole army on him. And try to hurt him, steal an item there, Orb of Darkness, now I can actually attack air with my Blade Master, that's just perfect. And here I'm coming in with everything. Good damage Kimira's do on ground. There he goes, he, uh, he was just too nervous, but he was also really too outgunned. And uh, even if he saved this demon, the game would be mine, so... That's it. I hope you guys liked the game. I sure as hell did. Uh, excuse my French. And uh, this was just map one of the best of three. There could be one or two more maps coming. And I'll be doing these in the, in the next episode of Grubby's Warcraft 3 commentaries. You just watched episode three, so please stay tuned for episode four in my epic travel back through time Warcraft 3 <laughs> series thingy something. So, thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.